an anti-creosote energizing ointment. Enjoy six cups worth of concentrated caffeine at every dollar. Spacer's choice. It's not the best choice. It's the spacer's choice. I've always loved that stuff. You, with the hips, over here. Let me take a closer look at you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip Suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Oh, you slay me. Not pasta, my dear. Contraposto. To slouch fashionably. One's posture reveals the quality of one's character. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. Darling, you and that brutish swagger of yours have been on my mind the moment you stepped into my studio. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? When I look at you, I see the very embodiment of everything the walls of Byzantium were built to keep out. Making an outfit worthy of you won't be easy. I'll need your help gathering the right materials. Marvelous! You and I are gonna wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face! What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. Oh, you cad! You'll be the talk of Byzantium once I'm done with you. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear. Helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacers choice pedals. You have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. I expect you'll cut an exquisite figure. What else do you need to know? I've heard rumors of these iconoclasts, half-mad zealots rampaging across the surface of Monarch. You'll have to find your own way into Monarch. I can't help you. Even if I could, I prefer not to interfere with your creative process. <laughs> I don't know, I've never seen a Marauder. Not in person, anyway. There are always Aetherwade programs, but I want something authentic. Byzantium is long overdue for a change of wardrobe, my dear. Something barbaric, yet elegant. If I were an enterprising spacer in need of a wardrobe, I'd probably head to the Groundbreaker. Fabulous! I can't wait to see what you dredge up. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. 
My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back of the envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. Darling, do I look like an amateur? I read her measurements by eye. And don't you ask, because they're no one's business but her own. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. I can't wait. What can I do? Can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. You know, there's, there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you done.
Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. I swear, next time we put in the groundbreaker, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask her over. Oh, I'm so nervous. Having trouble focusing on my work. We've arrived at the groundbreaker. All right. She's on her way. How do I look? You bet I am. You don't want to know how much engine gun came off me in the shower. Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. Every SAM unit comes le- Anyhow, so I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now, I ain't need your help, I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. He was probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt. He'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. Captain, we gotta talk about... about what you did to June Lei. I don't got words. She was the one good thing in my life, and now she's... I'm leaving. I don't know... I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I can't look at you. You make me sick. This isn't something you can talk your way out of. You murdered my love! 
the brightest light in my sky. One day, maybe you'll realize what you've done. Maybe then you can make it up to the universe, but you will never make it up to me. Goodbye, mister. I appreciate you making the time for this. June, call me pretty. Look at me, all dressed up for once. I'm having the best time. Captain, no spying. We'll get the kitchen back to you soonish, promise. <laughs> Isn't this swell? You're a real looky loo, huh, mister? <laughs> Isn't this swell? A reminder to all crew members, there is only one toilet on the ship. Okay, Captain, she's gone. I feel like running laps around the cargo bay. So she got here, and after a few minutes she said, Hey, do you have some new parts? And I was like, nah, I used a new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, 
Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it would work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals. Talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met Jun Lei at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy scream into my pillow for like an hour. Sometimes I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? You think he got lonely? 